Continuing coverage now, Taylor Parker becomes the seventh woman on death row in Texas. Well, Taylor Parker has been sentenced to death for capital murder. Accused of murdering a mother and removing her baby from her womb was arraigned in court today. Parker will face the death penalty. Sydney. Decided to pursue the death penalty against Parker for several reasons. Taylor Parker is on death row tonight, hours after a Bowie County jury sentenced her to die. Taylor Parker capital murder trial heard some of Parker's jail calls today. They show Taylor Parker still has no remorse for the killing of Reagan Hancock and her unborn baby. The crime. It was Friday, the 9th of October, 2020. 911 operators got a call from a woman named Jessica Brooks. She was frantic. Jessica's 21-year-old daughter, Reagan Michelle Simmons Hancock, was unresponsive, lying face down on the floor, surrounded by a large pool of blood. Reagan was 34 weeks pregnant with a baby girl. When the police arrived at the scene, there was blood all over the house. EMS personnel attempted to check if the baby, Braxton Sage Hancock, was still alive, but to their dismay, she was nowhere to be found. An extremely large incision was found on the victim's body, but there was no infant. The authorities requested help from Texas Rangers to begin an investigation. It was later reported that the suspected killer was seen with Braxton an hour before the 911 call came in. A Texas state trooper pulled a vehicle over in DeKalb, Texas around 9.30 in the morning when the suspicious woman in the driver's seat had a newborn in her lap. She was identified as 27-year-old Taylor Parker. After the officer noticed how the umbilical cord was still attached to the baby, Taylor told him that she had just given birth. The umbilical cord appeared to be coming from her pants, so the officer had no reason to question her. Taylor was giving CPR to the newborn until EMS arrived and brought both her and Braxton to a hospital in Itabel, Oklahoma. Taylor claimed that Braxton was her biological child, unaware of how medical staff are capable of knowing if a female had just recently given birth. When authorities spoke with the staff, they were told that Taylor had not given birth and the baby wasn't her own. Special Agent Dansby talked to Taylor and got her to admit what she did. She said that she got into a fight with Braxton's real mother and left the house after taking the infant. The autopsy conducted on Reagan revealed that her whole uterus has been removed. The incision was made by a scalpel and signs of struggle showed on her body, meaning she tried hard to fight off her killer. 100 wounds were discovered on her body and head, while the murder weapon used to also steal her child was not found right away because it was lodged inside one of her wombs. Aside from the grim murder, Reagan's family was devastated when they later learned that Braxton did not survive in the hospital. Taylor was arrested and sent to the Bi-State Detention Center on three separate charges, two of which were capital murder and homicide. Her total bond was set at $5 million when she appeared before the 202nd District Court in Bowie County, Texas. Taylor's Relationship to fully understand Taylor's motivations, investigators ultimately questioned her and spoke with other witnesses. They learned that Taylor was having relationship issues 10 months before Reagan was killed. They found out that 10 months before the murder of Reagan, Taylor was experiencing relationship problems. Her boyfriend wanted to leave her, so she planned a fake pregnancy in order to keep him around. Taylor even went so far as to announce her pregnancy online and let everyone know she was having a gender reveal party. She hid her tummy to make it appear pregnant and even created fake ultrasounds. Her scheme kept her partner by her side for a while and everyone around her was convinced she was actually pregnant. No one, not even her partner, knew she had a hysterectomy and would never be able to have children. Taylor was so obsessed with convincing everyone of her lies that she spent hours researching how to fake a pregnancy and even how to give birth to preterm babies that were at least 35 weeks old. When Taylor's partner Wade Griffin was interviewed, he confirmed to investigators that Taylor did in fact inform her she was pregnant and that she was due in November, but that she was heading to the hospital in Itabel to pre-register for labor to be induced so that their child would be born on October 9th of 2020. He told investigators that they had just celebrated having a girl with a gender reveal party and that he was scheduled to see Taylor at the hospital for the baby's birth at around noon. Wade said that he believed every word that his girlfriend has said to him. Taylor and Wade's relationship began in July of 2019. They met at a rodeo and developed their relationship online. 
Wade, however, described their relationship as an emotional roller coaster and that he had threatened to leave Taylor. He then shared how Taylor behaved throughout their relationship. He worked for a roofing company along with side jobs and Taylor would always prepare a meal for him when he came home. She catered to him and would do anything just to keep him from leaving her. She would always come up with elaborate lies. Taylor claimed to be well off and even asked Wade to finish a job on a home that would have cost $50,000. Wade then enlisted the assistance of his friend Juan, a father of four children. Taylor wrote the man a check, but because she doesn't really come from a very wealthy family, she couldn't afford to keep paying her boyfriend and his friend. As a result, Taylor lied and claimed that her mother had learned about the work and terminated it. Wade started using his own funds to pay Juan, but ultimately, he had to tell his longtime friend that they were out of work. Wade claimed that his friend sobbed shamelessly as he had no job and had been promised a significant amount of money. Wade's relationship with Taylor began to suffer from then on. Not knowing how big his girlfriend's lies were, Wade was heartbroken when investigators told him that Taylor had a hysterectomy back in 2015 and that she never actually became pregnant. He volunteered to testify against Taylor at her trial. Taylor's Trial and Verdict when Taylor's trial began in late 2022, it became clear that she was a habitual liar. The court was informed that Taylor used a text app early on in her relationship with Wade to change her phone number and pretend to be her father, Mark Morton. She sent Wade a message posing as Mr. Morton, claiming that he was in an accident and that his bush hog was total. Taylor then informed Wade that she would be helping him with the towing of the damaged farm equipment. Taylor said she was meeting up with Jace, a family friend, to help her, a guy she had just made up. During the fake event, Jace was supposedly attaching the bush hog to the towing cable when a winch snapped and the towing cable hit her in the stomach. She told this story to Wade and said that she had a miscarriage. That was the first time Taylor tried to manipulate Wade's feelings about being a potential parent by making him feel sorry for her. These lies were not exposed until Taylor was taken into custody for the deaths of Reagan and Braxton. Taylor even made a claim that she had twins at one point but lost them. Regarding her finances, Wade stated in court that Taylor informed him her mother was keeping the family's oil and gas royalties, but her grandmother was preparing to set up an account through which she would have access to some cash. To tell Wade about the money she received, Taylor even went as far as to create more fake texts and emails. According to a comment from Wade, he was a little taken aback and genuinely unsure of his thoughts, especially when Taylor's family texted him asking him to marry her. He claimed it all sounded nice and that he just couldn't believe it was happening so quickly. Taylor was attempting to get Wade to marry her by bombarding Wade with suggestions. Taylor was offered a chance to testify, but she refused to speak in front of the court. When it was time for the jury to deliberate, they found Taylor guilty of all charges and they found no mitigating circumstances in her past that would justify giving her life in prison instead of death. Judge John Tidwell agreed with the jury and Taylor was officially sentenced to death. 30-year-old Taylor is currently on Texas death row as of November 9, 2022. About Taylor's pregnancy, Wade mentioned he noticed Taylor wasn't growing or shelling during her pregnancy, and she just explained to him that it was due to her tummy tuck and that she did not carry like most petite women. When Wade asked his mother about it, she said that it wasn't possible for a tummy tuck to stop a woman's stomach from expanding. Wade also said in court that when he asked his friends Roger and his girlfriend if Taylor was really expecting a child, his friend Roger told him not to worry because his girlfriend is indeed pregnant. Eventually, his doubts faded because Taylor was too convincing. After the murder, Wade learned that Taylor had bought a false tummy for her maternity photo session. During Taylor's trial, a prisoner who was Taylor's confidant testified that Taylor told her that before leaving Reagan's home, she placed Braxton's cheek against Reagan's cheek and said, tell mama bye. The prisoner also told the jury that Taylor told her that she was taking Braxton to get a record of her birth and that when she was pulled over, she tucked the cord into her pants so that responding officers would assume that Braxton was hers. Despite being given the option to testify in court, Taylor declined. Taylor was found guilty of all charges and there were no mitigating factors in her past that may have prevented her from receiving the death penalty. 
Taylor received a formal death sentence after Judge John Tidwell concurred with the jury. As of November 9, 2022, 30-year-old Taylor is on Texas death row awaiting her execution. That's all for today's video. See you next time.